I'm here with Heber of the Buttery Bros, one Buttery Bro at least. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me on, Jason. How are you? I know I took you by surprise. We were on a call and I said, do you mind if I hit record? So I appreciate you being flexible and willing to chat. And it's exciting because you guys have some amazing things going on. The Buttery Bros, I feel like, are everywhere these days. We're, we're just trying to take advantage, you know? We're, we're just trying to have the most fun possible, and that requires us to be a lot of places. <laughs> you, it looks like you're having fun. So I want to talk about, though, what might not have been fun, you know, is probably a year ago now, right? You know, CrossFit made these huge changes, and they just let go of 90% of the media team, and you two were a part of that. Yeah, about a year ago, I was coming home from a trip for CrossFit to Iceland, uh, Sweden, Canada, and Boston. It was a whirlwind trip over the course of like seven days. We hit all those countries and places and did interviews for a documentary that we were producing. And then I got home and a week later, they let go of, uh, they made another second half of the media team they let go of. And so it was, it was definitely a a whirlwind of thinking that we were on one path to, oh, wow, we're on a completely different path. And now let's try and figure out what we're doing. <laughs> so the first half of the media team you get to let go, did you guys feel like you were in the clear or was there a feeling of like, okay, we're next, when's it going to happen? Uh, it was definitely, especially when I figured out what they were trying to do as a company, I was, I was kind of like, I think I should have been let go in August. So they let go of like a huge chunk in August and then another big shift in um, October. And then a little bit later, like three months later, they let go of another big group. Um, and so for me, when I, when I heard the new direction that the company was going, it seemed like all of the media and stuff that I was creating was exactly what they were trying to get rid of. And so, no, I didn't ever feel safe. Um, but, you know, as a positive thinker, I just put my head down and, and tried to go create some fun stuff while I was still working at CrossFit HQ, but very aware that there was a good chance that I wouldn't be there much longer. How quickly did your mindset go? Because you guys, I mean, from at least the looks from an outside perspective, really, you know, what's the expression? You took lemons and you made lemonade. You guys have something awesome going on. How quickly did you guys t reach out to one another and say, "All right, we're gonna be, we're gonna form the Buttery Bros, and we're gonna, you know, take this world by storm"? Um, it was a few. So to figure out what the Buttery Bros were was a few months. So in October, Marsden actually was in Brazil um, when he was let go. So he he was gone for an entire week, and we kind of like the entire month of October. I was just trying to figure out what I wanted to do. Um, with life and also we started like uh, immediately the next day I got phone calls from a handful of different companies wanted me to try and set up a, an interview with them to work for them and I didn't know if I wanted to work for a specific company um, we definitely knew we wanted to make a, a documentary Marston and I and we were thinking we were trying to figure out how to make the 2018 documentary still because at that time we were still in negotiations and discussions with CrossFit on how to make that happen um, slowly that dissolved. We figured, okay, we got to take advantage of this 2019 season. We need to tell a story mainly because we wanted to, uh, to still build up the athletes in the CrossFit space. You know, a lot of these guys are our friends. We wanted to see them still in a big light and, and tell their story as big as possible that we, like we've done in the years past. And so we were trying to figure out how to do that. Um, we went to the Dubai CrossFit challenge and we were still like, figuring out what exactly it is that we were going to be doing. And when we got back from that on new year's day, we happened to be shooting a commercial for a company um, with Matt Fraser. And we were in his garage that evening on J January 1st. And that we did one of the workouts from Dubai. We did acid bath and we filmed it and we thought it was kind of funny. So when we got home, we made it into a uh, little vlog and uh, by the time we released it, we were in Wadapalooza about two weeks later, and um, the impact was instantaneous almost, because the next morning we were walking around, we called the vlog the Buttery Bros, and immediately people were responding and calling us Buttery Bros, and kind of immediately picked up the vibe of 
what it was we were about as uh, creators. And so that weekend was incredibly fun and it really kind of helped launch us into this new YouTube space that we're currently in while also building things outside of that um, throughout the 2019 season. What does Buttery Bros mean? So for the years that we've been making movies and shooting content, Marston and I, anytime we, we nail a shot, it's really well composed. It's really smooth. I'd be like, oh man, Marston, that shot was buttery. And so, uh, or, you know, not just Marston, if anyone nailed the shot, we'd, we'd always refer to it as buttery. So um, we thought that it would be cool to name our company All Butter Inc. And um, we shoot all butter all the time. So we're the buttery bros. Did you do the filming of Ricky Garrard for the documentary where he says he didn't do drugs? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I did. I was I was face to face with Ricky and asked him some pretty pointed direction uh directed questions and um had some interesting answers from him. So I you know, I'm not trying to put you on the spot and feel free to tell me you can't talk about it. But did you know at that time that he had tested positive and he was lying to your face? Uh yes and no. Uh, it was an interesting position because I knew that he had tested positive, but at that time he didn't know. And what I had been told was to just go ahead and and go like you don't know anything, because there's still a chance he could appeal and his appeal process hasn't been completed. So it's not nothing's official until that's been set. And so once he has a chance to appeal, this could all be completely different. Um, so I went down and played that with the benefit of the doubt. He made that super easy because he like he was such an awesome host. He had breakfast for us. He had a skateboard for me that morning when we we went down to the beach and did some, uh, you know, I met him at his apartment. We went down to the beach and hung out of the water for, for an hour or two. Then came back. He had this whole morning routine that we did. Um, uh, and he was, a, he, did, he was a really great dude, but had this kind of history from the games, if you will. So so for me, asking questions, I I tried not to – go either direction but let him speak from what he wanted to say and we got the answers that you see in the movie gotcha got, yeah you know I, I know i had heard that in the past that he had tested positive but he didn't realize it and i didn't realize you were the guy filming it now you and you and you you two seem to be like best friends the buttery bros you have a good time what's been the what's the biggest fight you two have ever had <laughs> i don't Oh, we've ever. Come on, you guys uh, have it all the time. You travel around the world. You compete against one another. You guys seem super chill, super fun, but you guys must butt heads every once in a while. I mean, we butt heads, and we have. Uh, we try to have. Uh, I've learned over the history, like just in life, that way you handle problems and and concerns. Um, there's a handful of ways to go about things. And I know when I start to get angry, how I react. And so I try to find a way to, to not confront things when the, when I'm at my most heated. Um, and if I can take a moment and calm myself down and, and get in a proper headspace, then I can have a conversation. It doesn't turn into an argument. Um, and I've learned how to work with margin in a really good way. Um, I think if there's anything that we've had, that's kind of, been confrontational i'm sure there was some times at crossfit making movies where you're arguing over silly things like what does the color balance look like or what is the audio going to sound like or uh but i think most of the time we have a pretty calm a pretty calm conversation when we're having a stressful experience and um off the top of my head i can't think of anything where where i'm like oh this is a really funny story where we got in each other's faces but um for the most part we're both pretty calm and when dealing with each other and, and finding creative outlets to, to either express ourselves or communicate with each other with what we think the best ways to go about things is, if that well, makes any sense at all. Yeah, it makes total sense. Having had multiple business partners in my life, it's, it's not always easy. Now, I saw you guys in, at the 2019 games. Can we expect a movie? Yeah, we're, we're producing a movie for the 2019 games. Nothing from 2018, but 2019 we're creating 
something similar to what we've had in years past. Um, but with the new season and with the new changes, like so the documentary is kind of going to be what everyone's been talking about for the last 12 months, which is what is CrossFit doing and how is the sport going to change? And also taking into account what the story of the 2019 CrossFit games was like, who did what, who, who performed well, what was their struggles and what was that battle like? I mean, it looks to be like you're friendly with all the athletes, and I'm, and I'm sure you are, but does part of you want Matt or Tia to lose just for the movie? Um, no, I know you, I'm not trying to, I don't want you to you yeah. know, say anything bad about that. I'm not trying to get you to say anything bad, but I mean, it, you know, or is it just like the redeemed and dominant part two, part three? Yeah, it's kind of like... Uh, I don't hope ill for anyone. So I'm not like, Oh, for my movie, it'd be better if this happened. Um, what I try to do is just find new characters. Like if I'm bored with a character or, uh, I feel like I'm doing the same thing over again, you, you just turn the camera five degrees and you've got another face that you can talk to. Um, and that's kind of the case with this, where for this new movie or for Regina dominant, like a phenomenal movie turned out great this is kind of a similar story and Matt and Kia both win. Um, but there's different competitors that are actually pushing them in 2018. You had Carl Webb, um, 2019, no one really came close to, to Tia. She was just walking away with it. Although she had battles within workouts with individuals. Um, and Matt and Noah have this epic battle throughout the weekend. And that is a really interesting story. And Noah is a whole new character that we haven't really talked about in any of our movies. So I'm, I'm excited to kind of tell his story a little bit too. Well, and, and following up on that, I was going to ask you who has been over the years, your favorite kind of accidental star. Like you didn't know that you were going to spend time filming them going into that year. But then by the end, you're like, wow, I'm, this person really surprised me. Was it Noah from last year? Or do you have somebody else? Uh, it, you know who it is? Is it someone that hasn't made the screen yet? And it's Lucas Hogberg. I love Lucas Hogberg and he did amazing in 2018 and I kind of got to know him at the games that year. And then afterwards I went to Sweden and had an amazing few days with him there. And I, that guy is hilarious. He's tons of fun. Um, so he's kind of my accidental star, but, but I haven't been able to tell his story because we will have a little bit of him in the, this documentary, but the 2018 one, unfortunately won't, won't be made at this time. So is it, is it, that's, hard for you to be a fan of the sport a fan of some of these athletes and not kind of internally root for them oh i i just did root for everyone and but i also like i can take a really easy back seat because um at the games a lot of times i'm not actually watching the events i'm just waiting in the back for people to come and come to, to come and go so i'm definitely like i'm rooting for Noah. i'm rooting for matt if if one wins the other like it's an interesting story um uh yeah i'm not I, I don't feel like i'm ever in a weird position where i'm rooting against someone that i like or that hurts my story I, at this point in my life i'm not necessarily there as a fan i'm there as a profession and so it, it'll be a different experience when i go and watch it as a fan in a few years so so it's, it is your profession how hard is games week for you two uh, every year it's very different. Um, this year was extremely hard. We took on a lot. Uh, we produced two of our Buttery Bros shows and a documentary that we we put together literally at the last minute. Um, we were flying to Madison, Wisconsin, when we kind of locked down all the 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 production that we uh, we locked down all the deals that we needed to do to know like, hey, we're going to make a movie and we're not going to involve anybody else. Um, and so we, we brought up, like I was calling and hiring people as we were on our way there. Um, it was extremely chaotic. I think we pulled off something pretty awesome considering the time frame that we were given. Um, and, uh, it, but every year, like last year was super easy, really smooth. And that's 2018. By then we were super dialed in. Um, uh, when I filmed Froning, that was pretty chaotic. And then in 2013, I had an awesome time with No Chaos, where I just made a rap music video with Miranda Oldroyd and, and Pat Sherwood and uh, and Rory McKernan. And, and so, you know, it depends on the year, but 
now being independent, it was a very chaotic but extremely rewarding and fun uh, eight days that we were in Madison. Yes, I remember that video. You guys were up on scaffolding at one point. It was a, a fun video. I'm sure people can go find it on YouTube. Well, what would they could search like 2013 rap yep. video. Is, is, is 2018 think- not happening because CrossFit won't allow it or because it's just in the past now? Um, the, the short answer is CrossFit wouldn't let it. Um, when we tried in October and November of last year to negotiate and talk with them about it, the answer we were given was at this time, CrossFit is no longer interested in telling the story of what the games used to be. We want people to focus on what the games are or will be. And so, um, they didn't want to be putting out a movie because the movie wouldn't come out until March of 2019. people would be seeing it on Netflix in July and then be very confused because the CrossFit games had evolved and changed so dramatically since that movie was released. So that being the case, you know, there's always a hope and chance that maybe CrossFit will let us make that movie in, in three or four years and we could go back and kind of have a throwback movie, um, which would be very different than anything we've ever done, but uh, it could be cool. It's a, it, we had an awesome movie in the can last year. So it's, it, is it how close to being done is it? The 2018? Yeah. It's all shot. It's all shot, but nothing is edited. So I'd, I'd imagine that's, that's the hard part. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's shooting is very difficult because it's time consuming and you have to coordinate with athletes and schedules and, and getting places. It's kind of, it, but it's definitely fun. Um, editing isn't always the most fun because you're just kind of in a locked room in dark out for dark hours and, and long days, just, just slaving away in front of a computer screen. Uh, but there's a lot of fun doing that as well. If you, if you enjoy that type of work. You know, you know speaking of the changes, you mentioned like Lucas Hoberg, was there anyone just from another country that someone listening to this podcast probably wouldn't have recognized or still might not know that, that stuck out to you? Like, wow, you know, this female from Saudi Arabia or this guy from India, did anybody stand out for it to you this year that you wanted to get more footage of? From uh, 19? Yeah, from 19. You know, there's all these, you know, 150 males, 150 females. There's plenty of people you didn't know, I'm sure. Did any of those people stand out to you? The lesser known names. Yeah, I would say there was this girl from, let me look up her name. Um, yeah, Danielle Brandon. She took, I think, 11th. Um, and by the time I figured out, not figured out who she was, but by the time I got any cameras on her, uh, there was only like one event left. I mean, that's probably part of the problem with the cuts is is it's hard to kind of find people and then you find them and then they're, they're cut. <laughs> um, but she was super cool and, and very athletic and did really well and then got cut before this or right after the sprints. But I think in a rookie year, she made it to 11th place. So that's, that's a phenomenal first go for her. That, that must've been an additional challenge. Cause I'm sure you're, you're filming people like Fikowski and Vellner, you know, going into it, building up. And then all of a sudden they're out on day two or three. Does, that must impact you guys long-term when it comes to the 2019 movie. Yeah, it, it doesn't, it doesn't. So it's, it, you know, like we, we just looked at it like Game of Thrones, like some of your favorite characters get killed off pretty early on in season one. So <laughs> um, we, we were just like, we, we went into it like super bummed that people were going to get cut. Like it, it was heartbreaking to see Sarah not on the floor, or Brent Fikowski or Patrick not on the floor. But at the same time, it was, you know, it was the game that year. And, and um I think the hardest one for me was watching Brooke Wells, who had a minor incident that cost her her weekend and it changed everything for her. Um, like that was really hard to watch, but that's part of it. And, and if I wasn't as emotionally involved in it, I don't think the movie would, would be as good. So the emotions that I'm feeling and, and the hardness of that stuff is, is part of what movie making is about, you know, feel, feeling things with people that you are, um, interacting with i'm i'm very close with david tittle a mutual friend right yep. you, you, and i we joke around a lot about how people 
you know, just are like, hey, come video this, come shoot this, no big deal. This is what you do, right? What, yep. what's, what's the hardest thing about what you do that people don't realize when they ask you to come shoot a, a workout in their garage? Or I'm sure you don't get that anymore, but what's the hardest part about that that people don't realize when they're putting you out? Uh, I think the probably the biggest thing people don't understand is, and, and I think it depends on what it is that people are looking for. Like people might see the Buttery Bros and see that that's, you know, wow, that looks like they're having so much fun, but they don't see, it, you know, yeah, we're having fun in Aruba, but every night for the next three, you know, there's three or four nights right after that where we're not sleeping to try and get this thing done in time. I think it's the time that goes into it, both pre-production and post-production um, and setting things up. Like, you want to set up a, a really good shot and set up a really good um, match cut and editing. And it's not just pull out your camera and go, you have to kind of pre pre plan things. Then you got to shoot it a few times and then you got to go back and edit it. And your first edit might not be what you're happy with. So then you re-edit it. There's, there's just a lot more than, than pulling out your iPhone and snapping an Instagram story and posting it. Um, Although I think there's a lot of value to that type of uh, media and content as well. For what we're trying to do, um, it takes a lot of effort both before and after shooting. What's one thing anyone listening can do next time they pull out their iPhone to get better video or photo for their Instagram feed? Ooh, I think here's what I would suggest is shoot in the morning or in the afternoon or evening, sorry, morning or evening, like right when the sun is rising or right when the sun is setting, because then you have kind of an even light uh, that the sun creates at that hour. It's called the golden hour. You know, it's right after, right, right before and after sunset for, for a few minutes and then right before and after sunset, so sunrise and sunset. Um, the sun is light. It, it's it's not harsh. It's not in your face. Shadows won't be in your way, and you can very easily with an iPhone get a phenomenal photo. What's the best Instagram filter to give someone a six pack? <laughs> uh, I I don't know. I think I think uh, I think it's called nutrition and diet. It's, um, it's got to be a filter that makes you look a little bit sexier. I think there's a, I think there's a filter, um, there's an app that you can download now that you don't, even, you just, it's like, I don't know what it's called, but you can just bring your photo into it and put six pack abs onto it. Um, I'll have to find that. It's, that sounds a lot easier than counting my macros. Yeah, I definitely, there's definitely an app and you can add tattoos to your arms and things like that. There's all kinds of stuff you can do. Uh, but I think for filters, I don't use the filters on, on, uh, Instagram, um, but I would play a little bit with the editing if I, if I didn't do it already on my computer with the structure or the saturation. And it also kind of depends on what look you're going for, right? Like that's a complicated question for a photographer, which is depends on what your goal is. <sighs> what is the video that you guys are most proud of on the Buttery Bros YouTube? If somebody's like, hey, I'm listening to this podcast, I want to check them out. What's the video they should check out? Uh, the Kauai video, what we just posted, this recent one currently, is a ton of fun. It shows what we're about. It also highlights a really cool organization in Hawaii where they're donating and taking care of a ton of kids there. Um, that's, and it's 41 minutes long. Like, that's a phenomenal, fun video. 40, 42, almost 43 minutes long. Yeah, 42.57. I'm looking at it. We had Chris Hinshaw on not too long ago, and... We also had the owner of uh, CrossFit Kappa on, who's out in Kauai, and you know, definitely a great organization. So check out that video. So 43 minutes, how much footage is captured to get 43 minutes of edited video? You know, Marjan and I edit on different sequences, so I don't know what the total number was, because it's also not, we've never put together all the raw clips to see what, how much we shoot. Um, but I would say that we, I mean, we shot for, so I don't know the actual total runtime of actual just raw footage, but we shot for about five days and very rarely would you find Mars and I without a camera. You know, th that's, what's interesting to me. Are you guys like just so strong in that position? 
meaning what do you, you know, like holding the camera. Th like there's that camera I saw Marston in on the field, mostly Marston with it, um, and, and it's like you know his arms are at about ninety degrees, and he's got this like kind of rigged thing over the screen so he can see it because of the sun. Like it looks like you got this ten thousand dollar camera, and then he put together a piece of cardboard to block yep, out the screen. Exactly. Do they not yep. make? Do they not sell something a little nicer for that? They, they they do, but we we so yeah yes they do, but sometimes they don't like that. It actually works better than what they give you. Yeah, I, I remember kind of judging, and I'm like looking at them. I'm like that looks so funny because I'm sure that's a really expensive camera, and it's got like duct tape on it to block out this. Yep, thing. It's, got, it's got gaff tape and cardboard from Amazon boxes. Um, so that camera, particularly, that's a that's a red cinema camera on a on a Moby gimbal. So that's a, that's a pretty big rig. It's probably it's very expensive too, but it's very cinematic. We very it's really rare that we would ever use that camera setup for our show. But you so that was I believe show. the sprints, which makes sense. What's that? I believe that was for the sprint event on the um, on the field of the games this year. Not the sprint, the yeah. uh, the sled and the muscle ups. Yeah, he he. Sh so at the games, he was he was manning that camera for all the final heats of men and women, and at the games in at some events, we've we've brought out that camera rig. For the Buttery Bros show, we keep it a little lighter and a little bit more, a little less real estate, just so we can get to and from places a lot quicker. Um, that camera, the the red camera, is extremely hard, and there's definitely like a the first time you pick it up, like if I haven't touched it for a while and I pick it up for two minutes, I'm like, I'm beat. And you have to really acclimate to how heavy that thing can get. It is pretty gnarly. Yeah, I've, I'm, I'm impressed by you guys. Cause I mean, I'm just watching and I'm like, knowing fitness, I'm like, that cannot be easy. Do you guys, does, which helps the other more? Is being fit like you two helpful to be a good cameraman or is, because you hold these positions, you're like really good at bicep curls. <laughs> it's more like a bisometric. It's like a bicep isometric hold. It's like a hammer curl. It's just, you know, halfway up and you just hold it and walk around all the time. I think being fit probably helps way more than, than just actually walking around with <laughs> the camera. But if, um, have you ever left a day of shooting and like, I'm really sore from whatever I did? Yeah, you, you don't necessarily feel it in your biceps so much but like your cns all feels weird and you're you're out of alignment for like a few weeks especially shooting something like the games where for hours on end you're holding that camera rig um in years past when i've done it i've, I've definitely felt out of place for like you know all the way up until september you know right around the team series i'll start to feel good again yeah i mean there's an infamous scene where marston sprints faster than Frazier with the camera yep. and you know people lost their minds because he beat you know the fittest man on earth did did he brag a lot about that afterwards no actually so and that's a that's a different camera rig than what he's using at the games this year so that's a slightly lighter but still not still as impressive um but when he when he did it, he wasn't talking about beating Fraser. All he's talking about, uh, all we're looking at is the footage. You know, that's the only thing that matters at the time. And then later we start seeing people posting it about it on Instagram, and 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 uh, I think still now, like once a month, he'll get tagged in some video where it pops up again on some filmmaking thread, um, and we'll laugh about it. But but for sure, in the moment, all we're looking at is, you know, because it doesn't matter how fast you run. That's not his job. His job is to get the shot, and, and the shots are not phenomenal. But pretty cool if you could beat the fittest man on earth in a, in a foot race. Yep. All right. Last question for you. I know you got a busy schedule. So in the 2017 documentary, Redeemed and the Dominant, there's an opening yep. shot. Here come uh, Cara Webb at the time, or before she got married. Cara Webb. Tia Claire to me lunging in the same shot. Greg Martino, Jason Ackerman, judging. Yep. I'm afraid, judging. but you must have lost my address somewhere along the way because I have not gotten <laughs> any money. I'm in the opening shot of this movie. I get recognized all the time. The residuals have not. I'm expecting to retire off of this. Where Where is my money? Is what I'm trying to get at. 
Yeah, Jason, I would, uh, you know, contact Greg at CrossFit.com. <laughs> is that is that who's holding my check? That that he's got your check. You know, he's got. He's, I'm still waiting on residuals too, but we're in the same boat. <laughs> did did I sign a waiver at some point saying that he can use my likeness? Is that what happened? I must have. I'm I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure. Uh, you know, one would think. Well, I appreciate your time. So. <laughs> Certainly check out that video and the Buttery Bros. Subscribe to them. You guys are almost at 100,000 subscribers, so hopefully we can get you a couple more on YouTube. And where else can people check out your upcoming stuff, and when will the 2019 documentary be out? So probably the most, the place we interact the most is Instagram, at Heber Cannon, at Mars Media, at Buttery Bros., um the 2019 documentary we are still in the editing rooms cutting and it takes a little bit of time it will be if you're familiar with the crossfit movies in the past it will have a very similar release date so it'll be Mar march of 2020 um and it'll be on itunes and a handful of other video on-demand platforms and then we'll hopefully get it on some bigger ones as well how how hard is that i know i told you we were done but i do have a how hard is it to get picked up on something like Netflix or Amazon Prime or or some of these other new streaming networks? Um, it's it's definitely hard. You have to have a. It's not like there's a direct line where I can call up Netflix and say, "Hey, I got a new movie. Check it out." Um, and they're like interested. Um, Jeff Bezos of Amazon's uh, not calling you and being like, "Hey, yeah, like, we like, want the next one." Yeah. Like I got kind of lucky with Froning where we made Froning. We put it out on iTunes ourselves and the, uh, as ourselves I'm seeking from CrossFit. Um, CrossFit put it out and it was number three on iTunes charts that weekend. It, it blew up and uh, I got hit up on Twitter by a distribution company called uh, Gravitas Ventures. And so I put them in touch with CrossFit and then they you know, distributed Froning and got it on Hulu and a bunch of different platforms. I think it's now on Netflix. Um, and then they've done that for all the other movies that CrossFit made. And because of that, I've had a relationship with them and we're working with them on our newest movie. So they're already talking to Netflix and Amazon Prime and then kind of just negotiating to see what the best place would be for our movie to go on to. Very cool. Well, I'm excited for it. Hopefully I'm... You know, it's always exciting when, when we see ourselves in your movies. So I appreciate it. And hopefully everyone will check all of you, all of your information out, all that stuff out, because you guys put out really good, interesting stuff. And I think you guys are basically the, the go-to when people want to watch CrossFit on the internet these days. So thanks for all you do. Well, thank you. Thanks for listening to Best Hour of Their Day. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. First of all, it's free. How cool is that? There's a creation tool that allows you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer, so it becomes super simple. Some of these episodes with Fern or Todd or myself chatting with one another, we've done right within the app itself. Anchor will make it easy to distribute your podcast to all platforms, Spotify, Apple, and many more. And you can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make an awesome podcast in one place. All you have to do is download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started today. Come on, who doesn't have Spotify at this point? And if you were unaware, Spotify now is offering podcasts. That's right. On Spotify, you can listen to all your favorite artists, but also podcasts in one place for free. Spotify has a huge catalog of podcasts on every topic, including the one you're listening to right now, best hour of their day. On Spotify, you can follow your favorite podcasts so you never miss an episode. Premium users can even download episodes to listen to offline wherever you are, something I always do before I hop on a plane. And you can even easily share what you're listening to with your friends on Instagram and other social media platforms. Here's the deal. If you haven't done so already, be sure to download the Spotify app, search for best hour of their day on Spotify, or browse some other podcasts if you want. 
You can find them in your library tab. And also make sure to follow me so you never miss an episode of Best Hour of Their Day. Thanks again for listening to Best Hour of Their Day. We hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you did, one more time, please leave us a review on Apple Podcasts and send us any feedback you have to at Best Hour of Their Day on Instagram and Best Hour of Their Day at gmail.com if you want to shoot us an email. We appreciate you. Thanks again. Have a great rest of your day.